Hi there, and a very, very big warm welcome to the Small Business Saturday Inspire series. My name's Amanda Ruiz, and I'm going to be teaching you today about how to find your press hook and how to go digging for golden nuggets. They're really exciting things to be doing when you're looking about how to get into the press. Okay? So just to give a bit of background about who I am. My first business I started with my children, uh, that's Felix, he was uh, one years old or two years old in that photograph and my daughter, she was like a wee baby then, that was back in 2008. And I got very inspired to start my business because my relatives, my husband is Peruvian and um, his relatives, his in -law, my in-laws, sent over lots of beautiful ponchos and lovely knitted items from Peru. And I just thought, do you know what, these items, I haven't seen them here in the UK before. And I kept on getting stopped on the street and friends would stop me and go, Amanda, I love that knitwear, can I get some? And I thought, woo, what a great idea, what a good opportunity to share the lovely bright colours of Peru and also the lovely fibre, which is alpaca, which is a native fibre from Peru, and bring it over here to, Peru, to the UK and introduce it to the market. So that was my first business. I set up a company and it was called Peruvian Knitwear. Uh, but I then evolved my business, which I'm sure all of you guys will understand all about the evolution of the entrepreneur. And we actually rebranded the e-commerce store, as you can see, we then called it Hum, over here. Uh, and then actually I also changed the style of knitwear, really focusing in on the adult market, because um, I found I, had, I attended lots and lots of ex exhibitions, loads and loads of pop-up shops, and the uh, feedback, you know, the word on the street was, Amanda, I love the knitwear, but I want some for myself. This is for the adult speaking. So I actually evolved the range and just purely uh, made it to the adults. But we did have a very small children's range as well, which is really cute. So we kept on doing the ponchos. And then also we extended it to menswear. So that's what I did. But running the business, I learned or I knew instinctively, because I had worked for my mother's business and she was selling uh, beads back in the 1980s, back in the 1990s. She had a press mention in the Daily Mail and it was that one press mention in the Daily Mail which actually made her business take off, okay? And then she became the go-to expert. So when I, when I launched Peruvian Knitwear, I knew instinctively I had to get press coverage. So yes, I worked really hard and I managed to get all of these press mentions by myself. I did get the, have the help of some uh, PR agents as well, but these are the ones which I managed to secure for myself. And I'm now going to tell you what I learned, exactly how to get in there. So those are the logos, and this is the actual press, okay? So you'll see I got into the Daily Mail weekend. That took about six months of chatting <laughs> up the journalists to get in there. Uh, this Marie Claire, again, that took about four to five months to get there, so it's not a quick fix. Sometimes you get into the press really quickly. I actually got into the Independent, literally by sending an email with some lovely photographs, and then I was getting all these phone calls, and I thought, how come these people are all doing these berets? And the guy said, and then one of the customers said, well, actually, we saw you in the Independent. So I rushed out uh, to the news agents, bought the Independent, and then, you know, saw the piece which was in there. So getting press coverage is essential to get your business known in places where, you know, clients, you'll find clients in places that never existed. So I was getting orders from people in Scotland and, you know, distant villages here in Wales, London, you name the place, I was getting orders. It was fantastic. So my entrepreneurial evolution has meant that I was running my e-commerce store. I have then gone on, uh, and I, when I was running, doing all these pop-up shops, I would see opportunities, missed opportunities by small businesses, not actually um, taking advantage of when they're attending these, these pop-up shops to have any branding, not they weren't giving out any marketing collateral. I was thinking, oh, these people are missing so many tricks here. And I just found myself actually really loving helping other people as opposed to you know, working so much on my business. So I then had an evolution moment, and I've done lots of masterminding, and I've done lots of mentoring as well, and I was then branded the ultimate door opener. So then I was doing lots of one-on -on work, you know, and getting clients, they come to me and say, Amanda, I'd love to get into this magazine, I'd love you to introduce me to this, uh, this organisation. So that is what I was doing, but I have actually evolutioned, or evolved even further, and actually now what I'm doing is teaching clients um, a seven step program and it's called the seven secrets on how to get into the press because it's a proven program which I've gone through uh, I did it with my mum's business I did it with my knitwear business and it's exactly the program it's the steps which I take my clients when they want me to get them into the press so I'm going to tell you a little bit about this and then we're going to go digging for our golden nuggets and also finding how to find a press hook so the seven secrets what are the seven secrets okay so first of all it's how to find your press hook and golden nugget, which is what we're going to be covering off today. 
Step number two, it's really important that you understand who is your customer. If you want to stalk your journalist, I, I say stalk, I know it's a bit, sounds a bit over the top, but you know, if you want to get to know your journalist very well, and I really recommend you do that. Don't just suddenly randomly approach a journalist out of the blue. You need to understand what their likes are and all the rest of it. And also to understand your competition. What's your competition doing and where do you fit in that gap of what they're not doing or what do you feel they could be doing better and again you can be doing that. And then I teach people how to uh, create an actual press toolkit uh, and then also how to write a press release which is the essential part of getting into the press. But before you start picking up the phone and smiling and dialing, you really do need to have your PR plan of action sorted out because otherwise you might make a, a mistake which I made. I wasn't doing all these things and I actually called up somebody and she was on a photo shoot and she said, Amanda, never call me again. <laughs> so I got blacklisted. But it's all these secrets I teach people how, what to do and what not to do when you're get, getting yourself into the press. And then I go run through your campaign and your pitch. And then also success, woohoo, you've got into the press, what next and how to leverage it. So that's covered off in the Seven Secrets programme, but today let's get straight on and talk about press hooks. Does anybody else here know what a press hook is? No. Okay. So press hooks are also known as news pegs, okay? So if you just picture it, it's just literally what are you going to peg your story onto, okay? So just think of a press hook or a news peg. So the definition is... It is what, it, what makes your story relevant, timely or newsworthy. So you've all got businesses. Have you ever thought about how you can get yourselves into the press? If you haven't, don't worry because I'm going to give you lots of ideas right now. But just before we get started, I really want to tell you something really importantly. How many of you guys actually read the newspapers that you want to get into? Not many people. You see, it's, it tends to be 90%, 80% of people when I give workshops, they don't actually read the newspapers, yet they want to get into the press. So what I say is turn on your PR dart right <laughs> away. So get buying those newspapers that you want to appear in, that you want to be covered in, uh, and start reading them. And then you'll get inspired, and then you'll also get to know the journalists that you want to be targeting. So that's a real killer tip to start, on, start your radar, your PR radar on right now. So, press hooks. We need to be creative because you can't just say, oh, I'm launching, I've just launched a website. Everybody's launching websites all the time. And why is it really important? Why is it interesting about that? So I'm going to give you some ideas about how you can get creative. So one way, one press hook idea is to be reactive and to be relevant. So I was working with a restaurant over back in 2010. It was, a, it was the Football World Cup. It was Italy versus England. And the restaurant I was working for was a local Italian restaurant run by Italianos. So it was a really lovely restaurant and it had such beautiful pizzas. And I just thought, oh my goodness, how can we get these guys into the press, get them noticed? So this was being creative. So I said what, uh, to the owner, I said, why don't you get uh, your chefs to design a pizza which replicates the Mohican of uh, Mario Balotelli because he was in the press <laughs> all the time in 2010. I'm sure you remember it. So here we are, look at that. Here is his Mojica and here is the pizza. Okay? So I called up the local journalist from the Worcester Evening News and uh, he loved the story. He literally was there in two hours' time. I said, right, I'm going to send a photographer, I'm going to come down with my notepad. And we got him into um, you know, page three of the Worcester Gazette, which was great. So it resulted in. 20% uh, more bookings that, uh, that week or that period. So that was a really great result and that's actually thinking outside of the box. Now, this is a very, very recent story, reactive and relevant, and I'm going to call it the one that got away. So in my group, I teach people over an eight-week period, an eight-week course about how to get into the press and all those things I've just told you about. And I've got one client who has, a, she's literally running a PR agency and she's getting her clients into the press. So this is the one that got away because her client is a, uh, an opera, opera singer and we were just having a brainstorm about what angles, how we could get him into the press. And she was saying, well, he sang at the opening of the Channel Tunnel. Um, and I thought, oh my God, that was quite a few years ago. That's like 20 <laughs> years ago. Was that when Maggie Thatcher was still around? So uh, I thought, right, okay, how can we, what, what can we do? So then I remembered all about, you know, Kate Middleton was in hospital at this time. And all the time you would see her, you know, the, the coverage about the crowds waiting outside uh, the hospital, waiting for her story about, you know, what baby, what, birth, what sex baby she was going to give birth to. So you had these people camped outside the, Royal, the hospital, literally for two weeks. They had been there at the front of the queue. They wanted to be the first people to actually see the baby. So I said, why don't you 
sends, and you can just read here, it says, William and Kate send coffee and croissants to fans who've been camped outside St Mary's Hospital for a fortnight waiting for the news of the royal baby. So I just thought, wow, that's like a sitting audience, you know, like, let's do this thing. So I said, and you can see here, you've got like 1.5k shares, 567 comments. This was going to have the world's media, this is such an amazing opportunity. So I said, this, this singer, I won't be naming him, but he's an amazing guy, he's got a beautiful singing voice, he looks like James Bond, he's an amazing guy. Uh, and I said, look, why don't you stand outside the crowd and entertain them? Because, you know, all they said recently that was, that was happening, that was really exciting, was A, the croissants being bought, and then secondly, a family of ducks had just waddled past. And that was literally the news story of the day for that crowd. <laughs> so we were brainstorming on our um, Q&A session, and, uh, and another, another guy in the course actually came up with the idea and said, why don't you hashtag it? Because I said, we need to have hashtags to kind of make everybody go to it. Mm. A tenner for a baby. What a great thing! <laughs> but sadly, the opportunity, it, it, it wasn't possible, the guy wasn't around, he couldn't actually do it. But it was just one of those things you just think, oh my goodness, you could have done it, it could have really been really impactful. Mm. So another reactive and relevant uh, way to get into the press is I was working with a lady, very, very uh, talented leadership expert. She's called Mahela Birchi, and she's a Romanian immigrant, and you know, we've literally just had the elections, and so it's a really hot topic about immigration. It's always a hot topic, but you know, there it was Nigel Farage making battle about all of that. So I managed to get her onto the Jeremy Vine show, um, did a press release, and that's just literally you're listening to what's going on, the coverage, and it's you know, immigration, let's get you in for that story as opposed to talking about the leadership, because then when you're in the press, then you've got the opportunity to talk about that. And then also we managed to get her into The Guardian. <clears throat> she wrote a piece that it was called Don't Humanise Immigrants, a Diverse and Multilingual Workforce is Essential for Modern Business. So listening to what's going on is what you need to be doing with all your businesses. Another way that you can get into the press is by being, st being statistics-led. So I defy any of you today to get a newspaper, because you're now going to be starting to read the newspapers, pick one up, and see whether they've got a, whether they've got a survey in it. Every single newspaper, it's actually people. There are, I think, there's a there's a media organisation who literally carries out surveys that they can then um, send out to the press for press releases. So, is there anything within your industry that you can um, do a survey on? Okay. So here's an example. So in the Daily Telegraph, they had one recently saying the British accent is more attractive than French. Said survey. Thank you very much. We're very impressed about that one. And that was done by. Let's see, it was done by the Time Out Global Dating Survey. So they had done it because they wanted to bring attention to Time Out Global Dating. That was their clever press hook about how they're going to get into the press. So also, when you do your survey, think, maybe think about the end uh, product. You know, what, do you, what do you actually want your catchy headline to say? So that's a really great catchy title. So I did some surveys recently with uh, retailers and I discovered that they didn't actually have a marketing plan. So like 75% didn't actually have a marketing plan. So my catchy headline was, you know, uh, British retailers are, uh, you know, um, carrying out their, their sales or looking for business on a wing and a prayer. You know, they're like winging it because they didn't have a set marketing plan. So yes, here it is. It's the Time Out Global, Global Dating Survey. So another way you can get yourselves into the press is by being seasonal. So you might have businesses which are very, you know, seasonal. So here we are. So these are just some ideas I came up with, but you know, there are many more ideas here. But you've got January, it's detox, it's uh, January sales, it's the new use. If you look at Psychologist magazine, it's all about, you know, getting inspiration. Business magazines, okay, you tried that last year, chuck it out, let's try a new way of doing it. February, it's very obvious, it's Valentine's Day. I'm sure you can think of other things, other great events to happen in February. Uh, in March, there's a lot of Easter preparations. Can you think of anything else that goes on in March? I can't think of the moment, but you know, I'm sure you guys are going to think of anything. Huh? St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick's Day, there you go, excellent. There you go, fantastic idea. Uh, then in April, you've got the Easter, and also you've got the boat race. In May, you've got loads and loads of bank holidays. So I don't know, preparing for lovely trips if you're a travel company. Uh, then you've got Mother's Day, um, in June you've got summer picnics, in July there's lots of holidays. You know, just think about where, you, where your business could actually slot into those spaces as well, okay? So seasonal, I did a campaign with the uh, Independent Easter uh, campaign, it was great, a really great event, and it was in my local uh, town where I live, and that's Colchester. And uh, we managed to get into the press as well. It was a set campaign, and I was the person leading this one, it was organised by you know, a big organisation. But really, having something seasonal 
and also local can capture the attention of the press because you know the local readers want to read about it. and if it's seasonal it's all about easter egg yes i want to get into the shops i want to support my local shops so a local story this was still the same story about the easter eggs but yes we got into the press and can you see it's actually snowing in <laughs> easter it was crazy that was a few years back now but so the cracking way to support shops independent retailers in colchester have teamed up to offer easter eggs to youngsters around the town so that's a local story idea for you. Another local story was I had a client who runs a beautiful luxurious B&B in Newmarket. It's called Pavilion House. And, um, and Greta, who runs it, here we are, a small picture of Greta. She is the most amazing chef, okay? So she made all these um, pictures here, right? And she's also an ex-food stylist. So she makes these most delicious brownies, scones, fish pie, Delicious food. Anyway, we managed to get her into the press because Cambridge the Journal, they cover us for Cambridge Magazine. It's a lovely glossy. And they just loved hearing about this wonderful woman who's a local person offering a local service and offering delicious food. So, you know, that's another angle. Get into the press by showing what you can, uh, you know, what things you offer locally. And I also do say that try, with your story, getting into the press, I always actually recommend trying locally first. Get your pitch right first when talking you know, so don't go straight into the editor of the Daily Telegraph. Just start at the bottom of the pecking order to get your story straight, to get your, you know, your elevator pitch straight as well. And then investigative journalism, that's another angle. You know, whatever business you might be in. So I had a client, a wonderful guy called Chaz Jordan. Um, and what he does, his business, he goes around um, schools and organisations which hire or um, lease um, office maintenance products, you know, like whiteboards and telephone systems and all, um, you know, photocopiers. But, you know, schools are getting stunned by hidden, hidden copy costs. So getting him into the press there, it was brilliant. And as an end result of getting him into the press, it, he said, um, it dramatically increased awareness, awareness of the problem and it enabled us to work with a major player, okay, to make a difference in the industry and give us some national exposure which increased our profile and increased our sales. So think, just keep thinking about the angles. Another angle might suddenly pop up in your head right now, thinking, oh my God, I haven't thought about that angle. And then if you're an expert, okay, if you have an authority, have a piece like that. So a client of mine called Dee Gibson, she runs a company called Velvet Orange, she's a really talented uh, interiors designer and also property developer. We actually set the agenda for that particular piece in the uh, Daily Mail. So I spoke to the editor there, uh, you know, the journalist for this particular sec you know, the area, the, uh, the property section within the Daily Mail. Uh, and I said, well, you know, I've got a client, she'll be able to give you some really great ideas on how to spot an up-and-coming area. So he said, yeah, that's really great. Let me, uh, let me delve, delve deeper into it. Then he, he also spoke to other experts in the area, but she got quite a lot of coverage from it, which is really great. Um, so she got inquiries from overseas. So here's another example of expert-led, okay? So I've got a very good friend, she's called Tamsin Gary. She's the UK's leading expert on mindset and vision. And she had visioned herself to get into Psychologist magazine. Now, she is the queen of vision, okay? And I'm telling you what happened is she's actually bought literally every single uh, Psychologist magazine over the past nine years. So she had, literally, she's every picture, she's got piles of them like that. And she said, Amanda, I want to take you on because I want you to get me into Psychologist magazine. It's my favourite magazine. It's a really highbrow, it's an intelligent magazine. It's really suitable for my audience. Have a crack at the whip. And I thought, ooh, I love a challenge. I'm going to have a go, to go with that. So I actually spoke to the editor and, um, and I managed to get her in. And the editor said, really like the sound of it. And also it was great because that was, it's also seasonal. I've just talked about seasonal. This is uh, the January issue. So I think I spoke to the editor back in August. I remember it was the summer holidays and I was having a phone call. My children were playing in the park, the park and I was you know, climbing up the stairs and I was speaking to the editor because I was trying, they didn't know I was doing a business phone call. <laughs> it's really funny. Anyway, spoke to the editor and we got on really well and she liked the sound that Tamsin can actually mentor one of their staff men members. And this girl was mentored for four months and then Tamsin ended up getting a four page spread in this. And it really resulted in a lot of inquiries for her and she had a 100% increase in web opt-ins. So getting into the press, it really does work. Okay, so another way to get into the press is all about profile, okay? So I got into the press quite a bit when I was running my knitwear business because people like the, um, you know, the heritage of my husband's country. I've travelled there extensively. I speak fluent Spanish. This photograph here was taken by me on, you know, on a trip over there doing some sourcing. 
And it's just lovely showing the heritage, but showing also about who I am, you know. Um, and then I also like to talk about the mumpreneur type side of things. So I'm a busy mum, got two very young children, yet I can still do all this um, amazing, you know, well, <laughs> all this work, <laughs> which I hope gets really amazing results. And then also, have any of you won any awards? That's another way that you can get yourselves into the press. So try, apply for some awards, and if you get into the awards, get yourselves into the press. So uh, this was really early days, that was back in 2008, and I literally just started running the business. There was an opportunity for a Dragon's Den style competition locally, uh, and I managed to be a finalist, I managed to win it. Woohoo, so that was amazing. So I got into the press, and as a result of being in the press for the award, I was then approached for some other opportunities as well. So go for, go for some awards. And even if you don't actually win the award, if you're a runner-up or a finalist, you can also say that in your, your um, email signature. So a great example of how to, get it, how to win an award is actually applying for the Small Biz Saturday, and it's called Small Biz 100. Check them out, because I know that the uh, applications are open at the moment, so uh, I might be applying for that girl. <laughs> okay. So here we go, look, I'm just saying here, two additional media opportunities arose as a result. And then product placement. How many of you people are actually making beautiful products, crafty products? I know that you've got somebody who was a really good winner, wasn't she, a few years ago? Francesca. Yeah, Francesca. So she got a lot of um, product placement. So here we are, here's my lovely pom-pom scarf. And yes, that was uh, quite a long haul to get into, the, into that, but oh my goodness, getting into Marie Claire, that was amazing. So yeah, product placement, but I do recommend with your products, you actually get really great shots professionally taken on a white background. If it's on a busy background, then they're gonna have trouble actually cutting it out. So what will happen there? I sold 20 units in one week. And yeah, they're expensive scarves, so that was a really great achievement. And here we are, uh, getting into the wish list. So can you see my pom-pom poncho in there as well? Uh, yes, and I think the woman got a bit sick of me at the end. I can't where her name was now, but you know. <laughs> I did call quite a lot, but being persistent, it got the results. And you know, again, I can say that I got into the Daily Mail. It's a great achievement. And I sold 18 units as a result. Wait. Okay, so let's have a quick run through. Question How do I get into the press? I'm sure you're all asking that question right now. I'm going to tell you two key things you need to do that is research, read the papers you want to appear in, and then also. Think like a journalist boss, all right? So they're going to be saying, why will our readers want to be, be wanting to read about your story, okay? Just think about it. Whenever you read a story in the newspaper, it's an interesting story, isn't it? Yeah? It's interesting because the editor has been a journalist who's gone and done their research about it. Then that journalist has then gone and pitched it to the editor and said, look, I want to include this story. Everything gets passed. So, that, you know, there are quite a few routes that you need to do. So just think like a journalist boss. Right guys, let's go digging for golden nuggets. So we've covered off the press hook. Hope you've got all lots of ideas buzzing around in your heads now. Now what's really important is to dig deep. Now this is information that you need to find out about yourself. So you can do it with a friend, with a colleague, um, go down the pub, go to a coffee bar, whatever, but let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hand out some sheets right now. Okay, here we are. There you go, thank you. Right, and let's go digging for golden nuggets. What do I mean by going digging for golden nuggets? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. Oops. Oh yes, and if you're online, go here. It's Amanda, www.amandaruiz.co.uk forward slash golden hyphen nuggets. And then in there, you'll be asked to enter your email address and then you can unlock the sheet which I'm actually, which we're going over right now. Okay. So why is it important to go get digging for golden nuggets? Well, you know the client I talked about, the one, the guest house owner? Uh, when she was interviewed for that really interesting piece, uh, the one with the uh, Cambridge magazine, that journalist dug a really amazing golden nugget. I thought I'd dug all of her golden nuggets out, but there's another one, and that was that she used to work at the BBC canteen, and every morning she'd prepare Sir Terry Wogan's omelette. <laughs> you know what I mean? And that's like an amazing nugget, but she just thought, oh, that's really boring. You know, I know that story. You know, that happened 20 years ago. It's not important. It's not relevant. Actually, it's really important. I think it's a really great golden nugget. So, okay, so let's go through this sheet. So first of all, who is your competition and where are you different? Where do you stand out? So fill out this in your own time, but it's just something which, you know, you can think about and then keep coming back to as well. 
And what is your USP, your unique selling point? Why do you guys, why do you, with your particular businesses, why do you stand out from the crowd? Now, the third question is, what is your big why? Why are you doing, why are you running this business, okay? Is it because you want to have financial freedom? Is it because you want to give back to society? And is it because you want to put bread on the table? Now, I'll tell you why it's so important to understand your big why. It's because when you're actually making that phone call to the journalist, and it's quite nerve-wracking to actually pick up the phone and speak to the editor of Psychologist magazine. Even me, who does it all the time, it's still quite a nerve-wracking thing to do. But you do, you, do you know what? I'm doing it so I can uh, put my kids through university. I'm doing it to put bread on the table. So even if you get a knockback, and they're a bit snooty with you because you will get knocked back. Some journalists are so busy, they get phone calls all the time. And they'll probably won't thank me for advising you to actually phone them up, but I have got the best results when actually I speak to the journalists. Um, speak to them very politely, but if they are a bit, do you know what, we're on deadline, don't speak to you. You know, don't take that as a bad thing, just say, okay, that's fine. Or, I mean, I have an example with my knitwear business. I had, uh, you know, I was running on a shoestring budget. And I designed the catalogue, I styled the photo shoot, I got a friend, I was supposed to do this girl in the cafe and I asked her to become a model. She was a beautiful, really attractive girl. Anyway, I spoke to an editor, a fashion editor for a you know, stylish magazine. She goes, it doesn't look like you actually uh, you know, <laughs> used professional hair and makeup, did you? And that was really upsetting. And I just thought, well, okay, fair enough. So kind of, I, you know, calmed down. I thought, well, thank you for that insult. But you know what? From adversity, great things happen. So I just went back, pick up, picked up the phone, had a great phone call from the next person. So understanding what your big why is. Why am I doing it? I'm doing it so I can get my kids, you know, some, you know, some great education. That's why I'm doing it, okay? And then what you need to also do is to describe your business in one sentence as though you're telling a five-year-old, okay? This is actually from Kiki Loazou. Who is, a, who is the um, journalist for the Sunday Times, small business, she's a great woman, and that's what her boss asked her. So whenever she's having to pitch her, you know, her uh, people's stories, she needs to say it in just one simple sentence. Hello, my name is Amanda Ruiz, I'm known as the ultimate door opener, and I teach clients how to get into the press. It's an essential um, life skill which every, every small business owner needs to know. It's something just small and snappy, that's what I do, okay? So try and nail what you do in one sentence, because I go to many networking events, and the person stands up and I'm still going, what do they do? I don't really understand. So just try and be really clear with your message. And also journalists like to know what your background story is. So have you had any adversity? Have you had an amazing job in the city that you decided to leave it? What's your background story? Greta, she was a, you know, she's an ex-professional chef and food stylist and worked at the BBC Canteen. So you know, that's a really interesting backstory. And also then you need to think about why would the public or the reader want to relish your story? What makes you so interesting aside from the, from the uh, product or company? So that's a bit of the uh, profile piece which we talked about earlier. And then have you done anything that's made a difference to stand out from the crowd? What have you done? Have you rubbed shoulders with any big names? If so, who? Do you have any famous brand ambassadors that you can quote? So again, with my knitwear, I had a friend who was a stylist and she was about to go and style Miranda Richardson. And she goes, Amanda, you know, I think, why don't you, um, you know, offer her one of your cardigans, one of your, one of your jumpers? And Miranda said, yes, I'd love to have, you know, the cobalt blue batwing jumper. So she took it. And then she gave me some lovely testimonials. And so to hear, you know, lovely, really beautiful, famous woman having my knitwear. Again, it backs up and it gives you credibility and kudos. And then think about, with digging your golden nuggets, what are you, what are you passionate about? And then why did you start the business, okay? Did you leave it because you got made redundant? Or is it because really you've got a hobby and it just literally took over? And then which light do you hide under your bushel? Okay, so there are things which you'll have in your background. You might have studied one thing, and then you've gone on to something totally different, but it might be very, very relevant. So what are the amazing things? I mean, I, my little light I had under the bushel is I used to play lacrosse for England. Okay, so it's, a, uh, it's quite an aggressive sport. And so you need to have a bit of aggression when you're, you know, having to try and speak, not aggressive t talking to the press, but you know, you've got to have persistence, okay? So that's my kind of thing I hide. I don't tell it to everybody I meet, but you know, I tell the relevant people. And then again, the final thing on the sheet is if you've won the awards, and if so, when and what, okay? So that's digging for golden nuggets. Oh yes, and then when you've done it, don't forget your uh, tip about Terry Wogan and the omelettes, okay? 
And then my uh, golden nugget is also the Peruvian heritage. So people are interested, you know, why have I got this uh, foreign sounding surname? I'm English. I feel like a plastic Latin. I feel very Latina because I do speak Spanish. We speak Spanish all the time in the family. So that's an interesting thing for my golden nugget as well, as well as the lacrosse playing. So I really hope that today I've given you some fresh ideas. Have I inspired you to think differently? Have I given you some ideas? That's really great. I'm really pleased. So what I can do, if you would like any of my help, um, I want to help people who are dynamic, ambitious, action takers and people who are totally committed to growing their businesses. So if, it, if that is you, then go along to my website and book a call to speak with me today and I can tell you about my eight week course which I talk about, take people through and they're getting results even in week five and six. So um, I'd love to speak to you if you want to have any other questions answered so please go along to amandaruiz.co.uk forward slash apply. And then all I can say to finish off is thank you so much for your time and to Small Business Saturday. Good luck and go for it.